this video, we're going to take a look at adjusting sequences when they don't necessarily start at term 1 or term 0, or when term 0 is difficult to calculate. So let's take a look. Um, we're going to be looking at adjusting sequences that are both arithmetic and geometric. A typical sequence would look like one like this here, where you've got the arithmetic sequence 4, 12, 20, and 28. Now what I would recommend doing, or typically it is done, is that you take the sequence and you table it. So you come over here and you say, okay, well that would be n and t of n, and this is the first number of my sequence, so that's 1, 2, 3, and so on. So then I'd say, okay, my first term is 1, 2 is 12, 3 is 20, and 4 is 28. And then what I'm looking for is the pattern. Now we all know that the two key ingredients to writing an equation is you need what it starts at, better known as its initial value, and what it goes by. So I need to figure out this spot right here, the starting value, and in this case that's where the zero would be. And that is the initial value of where it starts at. So then if I look at this, I can clearly see that this is adding 8, adding 8, adding 8. I know it's going to do some kind of adding or subtracting pattern because it's arithmetic, and arithmetics follow that kind of pattern. Then it starts at, well, if this is 4, I'm going to go backwards 8, which would put me at negative 4. Then my sequence would be t of n equals, it starts at negative 4, and then I add 8 every time. How many times? Well, it depends, so I just put the n down there, and repeated addition is multiplication, or shown this way. So I've got negative 4 plus 8n. Now sometimes people rewrite that, they just rewrite it as 8n minus 4, but realistically, that's a good answer because you're listing what it starts at and what it goes by. Now, if we take the exact same sequence and they say, whoa, 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 this isn't the first term, this is the 12th term, and the 13th term, and the 14th term, and you've got to figure out all those ones before it, to try to you know, write the equation. That's a lot of work. So there is this thing called adjusted sequences. And adjusted sequences allow you to not start at term one or term zero, but adjust it to anywhere. So an adjusted sequence table would be like, okay, this is no problem. I've got the term 12 is a four, because that's what's showing up here. Term 12 is four, and term 13 is 12. So term 13 is 12, term 14 is 20, and so on. Now what most people would say is, well if I'm filling in my table n and t of n, that I'd have to go all the way back to zero, and I'd have to, well I know this thing adds eight, because we just did this, I'd have to subtract eight, subtract eight, subtract eight, subtract eight, a whole bunch of times, 12 times as a matter of fact, to get back to the zero value. That's kind of a waste of time. So adjusted sequences let us do this. Well instead of starting where zero is, we can just say, you know what, we're going to start right here. We're going to start at four. This is going to be now our starting value of 4. So t of n, our sequence, equals 4, and then it's adding 8 every time. But the only difference is I adjusted it. How many places? Well, I'm, it would I would have to take this 12, and I would have to subtract 12 moves to get this back to 0. So I just call this n minus 12, because I'm 12 in 12 places back, that would get me back to the 0 value, and I've got it set up. Now this is the adjusted sequence equation. The only problem is, is that we're not done because we all know distributed property. Distributed property tells us if I have a number outside of parentheses, I can distribute that number to both of those in the parentheses. And then I'm going to get 4 plus 8n, and 12 times 8 is 96, so that's minus 96. So t of n equals, and then I need, this is a number and this is a number, bring those together, and then t of n would equal 8n minus 92 and that's the adjusted arithmetic sequence. When you adjust arithmetics, you do need to do some simplification with the distribu distributed property once you write this n minus 12. So the 4 comes from what it started at, the 8 comes from the pattern or what it goes by, and then the minus 12 is I'm 12 places away from 0. I'd have to subtract here 12 spots to get back to 0. So that's where all the numbers come from and you can write the equation for it. And that's on an adjusted sequence arithmetic. Let's jump to geometrics real quick. Geometrics, same thing. If I was going to do this, but the only difference is geometrics are exponential or repeated multiplication. So this is the first term of the sequence. If it was regular, second term would be 6. Third number of the sequence is 18 and so on. You can clearly see that that's times 3. You know you need what it starts at and what it goes by. So I can say, okay, what does it start at? It starts right there. The zero term would be divide by 3 to go backwards. So that would be 2 thirds. 
So this would be 2 thirds, t of n equals 2 thirds, and then what's happening to the 2 thirds is it's multiplying by 3, multiplying by 3, so times 3 to the n power, because repeated multiplication is exponential. Now to show this with an adjusted sequence is what if we, what if we said, you know what, this isn't the first term, it's actually the 12th term, like we talked about before, and this would be the 13th term. Okay, it's no big deal. We just write down our sequence as a table. We say, okay, the 12th number is 2, the 13th number is 6, the 14th number is 18. And instead of working all the way back to 0, <laughs> can you imagine doing that? This is times 3, times 3. We'd have to divide by 3 12 times to get back here. That's going to be a really small, teeny tiny decimal, like point zero 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 something really small. So instead, we can just say, you know what? I want to start right here. Well, if that's where I want to start, I write my sequence adjusted as t of n equals, I'm going to start right there. I'm going to start at 2. What's happening to 2 is I'm multiplying by 3, but I need to go 12 moves back to get to 0. So then the equation would be n minus 12 would be my exponent instead of just a plain n. And you can type that in your calculator to verify that that is in fact the equation. So if you just simply type that in, you can see what that equation is and that the table works. So 2 parentheses 3 um, to the, and then it would be x minus 12 power, and then you can go second table, and the 12th number in the table is in fact 2 like it's supposed to be. Okay, so now that's how you do it. What it starts at, 2. What it goes by, times 3. 2 times 3, and then I'm 12 places away from 0. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to put up two problems that I want you to take a look at, see if you can figure out the equations for them. Pause the video because shortly thereafter, I am going to show the solution. So here are the two patterns that I would like you to try to write the equations for, and these are the ones that you can try. And I'm telling you that this is the ninth term of the sequence, and this is the 27th term of this sequence, and if that's the case, come up with the equations. So pause the video right now because I'm about to put up the answers. All right, welcome back. Here are the solutions. The first answer would be this. It starts at 100 or 0.125, and then it's multiplied by 12. These are 12 times bigger, and it's n minus 9 because it's 9 moves away from 0. This one would be this. It would start as 27 places away from 0, but we can do distributive property, and we can simplify to 4n minus 101. Hopefully your understanding adjusts the sequences better and things are going well. Good luck.